Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and today I'll be showing you how to create this composition where it looks like we have some text and it's like tangled in these waves or in these lines. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.32 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. <laughs> Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in my brand new WordPress 6.0 for non-coders course also on Udemy, or you can get access to exclusive premium content, including my courses by becoming a DMD premium member. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. This tutorial does require a few steps, but it is surprisingly easy to create this composition. So let's dive right in here. I'm going to start off by hitting Control N on the keyboard to create a new image. I can also, of course, go to File, New. And I'll go with the 1920 by 1080 document size and click OK. So first off, let's set up our background color. I'll come over here to my foreground swatch under the toolbox and click on that foreground swatch. I'm gonna go with this color here, which is kind of like an orange reddish color. You guys can debate that in the comments. You can just copy the HTML notation right here in this field and I'll click OK. Once I have that, I'm gonna click and drag this onto my composition and release my mouse and that's gonna give me that nice reddish orange background. Let's call it orange and keep it simple. Next, I'm going to draw the lines of my composition on here. I'm going to start off by making the lines a different color from the background just so we can see it, but then we're going to change it to the same color as the background later on. So what I'll do first is I'm going to create some guides, so I'll do some center guides, and I can do that by going to Image, Guides, New Guide by Percent. We're going to set the direction to horizontal and the position to 50% and click OK. And then I'll hit Control shift f to repeat that probably Command Shift F on a Mac, and we'll go to Vertical and click OK. So now let's grab the Paths tool over here in the toolbox. So you can see the shortcut key for that is going to be B. So I'll click on my Paths tool, and I'm just going to click at the very top and the very bottom of my composition, and then I'm going to click and drag the node until it snaps to the guide, and I'll repeat that on the top portion. So now we have our path. Let's come over here to our Layers panel, and I'm going to click to create a new layer, and I'll name this layer Line, and make sure it's filled with transparency, and click OK. So we've got our Line layer, and that is now our active layer. I'll come back over here. We still have our path drawn here. So if I come over to the Tool Options, you'll see we have an option for Stroke Path. Let me just come over here and switch my foreground and background color so that black is my foreground color. If white is your foreground color, that's fine too. But I'll come over here and now click Stroke Path. And I'm gonna go with the Stroke Line Solid Color and let's set this to 20 pixels for the width. And actually, I think I went with 50 pixels. So let's go 50 pixels for the width. And then the Line Style, we're going to make sure this is set to Line and then come over here and click Stroke. So there is our line. We now have a nice thick line. So next we're going to add a wavy effect to this. So to do that, we're going to open up our Search Actions feature. I can do that by hitting the forward slash key on my keyboard, and I'll start to type Waves. So there is the Waves filter. We're gonna double click on that to open it up. And as long as you're on your line layer, you're going to get this nice wavy effect. I'm going to start off by changing the center here. So we're just going to adjust this so that the center is way negative or pretty decently negative. So that's going to give us just a nice symmetrical wavy line here. So next we're going to come over here to period and we're going to just increase this and that's basically going to stretch the waves out and that's just the look we want. We don't want it being too close together with the waves. So oops, make sure you don't uh, do the amplitude there, so we're going to turn that down a little bit. Amplitude is basically just going to push the waves outwards. So you can shift that if you want to, uh, but now we're just going to work on the period value here. 
that looks pretty good. You might see it like this where it's kind of cut off at the bottom. If you see that, just continue to drag the Y value there, the center Y value, until that goes away. So there you can see I've adjusted the value there and now it's gone away. So once we're ready, we're going to come over here and click OK. So now we have this nice line. Now we're going to change the color of this to match the background color of our composition. So on the line layer, I'm going to click, you'll see it says lock right here. And we're going to click lock alpha channel. In GIMP 3.0, they're going to change that so that the little lock icons are over here. But here on the line layer, I'm now going to click and drag this orange color and release it. And that's going to change the color of my line. So the next step here is we're going to add a drop shadow to this. So to do that, I can go to filters, light and shadow, drop shadow. And it's very faint right now. So I do have to come over here on my line layer and make sure we turn off the lock alpha channel. There we go. Now what I'll do is just decrease the blur radius a bit there, or you can increase it if you want. And we're going to play around with the values here. You can also increase or decrease the opacity of this. Totally up to you. I'll keep it set to the 50% that it was at. So once you're ready, click OK. Now you have a drop shadow. So let's shrink down the layer. We'll go to Layer, Crop to Content. That'll shrink that down. Now we have a nice wavy line. So what we have to do next is we have to duplicate it a bunch of times. I'm going to duplicate this around 10 times. So on the line layer, come over to the duplicate icon and just click this 10 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have a bunch of these. The drop shadows have now all added on top of one another since they're all stacked up. And now it's a lot darker, but we're going to fix that momentarily. So hit the Q key on the keyboard to grab the alignment tool. You're going to click and drag your mouse over all of the lines and release. That will select all of these lines. And then we're going to come over here and under a line in the tool options for relative to, make sure that's set to image. And then under distribute, we're going to click this option here that says distribute targets evenly in the horizontal. And that's going to give us a nice evenly distributed line. So in my case, I feel like I could add one or two more lines. So I'll hit control Z to back up, come over here and just duplicate this maybe one more time. And once again, click and drag over all the lines, distribute it, and that looks a little better. Next, we're going to add our text to this. So I'm going to come over here and grab my text tool. I'm going to change my foreground color here to white and click OK. And the font I want to use for this, I'll start to type it. I don't know how to say it. I don't really remember what it was. Uh, Sego UI Heavy. That doesn't sound right, but that's the font I want. And then I'm going to change the size here to 500. And now I'm just going to click on my composition. And with the caps lock key on, I'll type G. And then I'm going to click to create another text layer, type I. Click to create another one, type M. Click to create another one, type P. So each text, uh, each letter of the word GIMP is going to be on its own text layer. So now we're going to grab the move tool here from the toolbox and just reposition this text to wherever you want it. I like to do the text like this where it's sort of staggered and it's going downwards in like a diagonal motion. So now you can just sort of fine adjust this. I am just eyeballing it and that looks pretty good to me. So once your text is placed on the composition, now we're going to create the actual illusion. So what we need to do is we need to figure out where this line is in the layer stack because now we have a bunch of different line layers. Rather than going through each one of these individually, just Alt and then middle click with your mouse. That's going to select the line that you want to select. And now we're going to place this line above that letter. So the easiest way to do that is to just shift click on this up arrow and that's going to bring it to the very top of the layer stacking order. And now you're going to see that that line is above that G. So we can repeat it by alt clicking on this one here. You'll see it'll select the line copy number six layer. We're going to shift click to bring it to the top. And let's come over here. We're going to alt click on this one right here. 
shift click to the top, and then alt click on this one here, shift click to bring it to the top. So there it is. Um, there's a few other things we can do here to make this effect look a little nicer. So let's make sure we still have the move tool selected. You can click on the layer and bring it over like so, just so it's not you know, as uh, covered by the line, we get a little bit more visibility on the letter. And we'll do the same for the M, something like that, and then the P as well. So we're just adjusting the position here. So what we also wanna do is just rotate the letters a little bit. And that's just gonna, once again, give it a bit more of a dynamic look. So let's just come over here to the lettering and we'll start with the G. We'll hit Shift R to grab the rotate tool. Right now that just rotated my path because I do have this set to transform the path. So what I'll do is hit reset and then make sure I transform this to the layer and then click on my G. So now let's click and drag this to rotate the G. And interpolation you might wanna to set to no halo there. So come over here and click rotate. So now we'll move on to the I. Let's rotate it the other way. Click rotate. M, rotate, and then P. So I'm just rotating them all in opposite directions so they're kind of staggered with the rotation. And now what we can do is we can, once again, adjust the positioning of the letters if we need to. I think those all look pretty good. And finally, what we'll do is we'll add a layer mask to the letters so that whatever is poking out on the back end here is going to be hidden, and that way it looks like they're underneath various layers of these waves. So what I'll do is grab this tool here, the free select tool, and I'm just going to roughly draw the wave there like so, and hit the enter key. And then I'll come over to the G layer, and you'll see that the text information was discarded from this layer now because we applied a transformation to it. But what I'll do is come over here and you'll see the layer mask icon. We're gonna click on that. We're going to choose initialize layer mask to selection because we're creating a mask from the selection area. And then we're going to invert the mask so that everything outside the mask or everything outside the selection area, I should say, is going to be visible. So everything inside here will be invisible. Everything outside will be visible. That's why we're checking invert mask. So I'll click add and I'll hit Control shift a to deselect that. So there you can see that part of the text is hidden. Let's repeat for the other uh, pieces of text here, the other letters. So I'm gonna come over here to I. We don't have to go through all that stuff with the layer mask again, just shift click on it and that will apply the same settings. So now you can see that has been masked out. Control shift a to deselect that. Let's repeat right here. Hit the enter key, click on the M layer, and then shift click on the layer mask icon, control shift A to deselect that. That's the same as going to select none, by the way. And let's do that one more time with the P. Hit the enter key, come over to the P, shift click on the layer mask, control shift A to deselect that, and there is our final composition. So let's click on the background layer, control shift T to hide the guides, and there you have a really cool text effect. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.